decisions. I started my meeting at 10 o'clock. Okay, bye. All right, it's six o'clock. I'll call the meeting to order. We all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and the people, for the King and Justice for all. Christina, you have the roll? Yes, sir. This time, Councilor Johnson, would you like to move the approval of the tonight's agenda? I'll move for the approval of tonight's agenda. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda is approved. Motion. Accepting. Councillor Kiewicz's resignation from the council. John I'll make a resolution uh, 2022 20, to 13, uh, the resignation of uh, Councillor Kiewicz. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Next, a letter for Mr. Ronald Frederickson, Frederickson and approval of resolution 2022-14. Address Ron first the letter. I think so. I thought it was well written. <laughs> Mostly factual. Mostly. The uh, well, you know, forty six years ago, it's by the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, is there anything that you feel you want to say before? Uh, just what I said in the letter that uh, Fredrickson and Gillette names were intertwined in this town for years. My dad and your dad were cohorts on the city council 46 years ago. I think your dad may have already been on the council when my dad was elected. But I had the unique experience of the first time I could vote, voting for a ballot that had my, day, my dad's name on it. So he was elected in 1976. I would like nothing more having returned to town and to uh, resume the Fredrickson family tradition of public service. When I spoke to you and uh, found out there was an opening on the council, I thought that would be a perfect time to slip in and start working for the betterment and improvement of our town as my dad did and as your dad did. So I would ask the council's consideration of my letter of interest. I think that it's uh, well taken, sir. Do we have any questions for Ron? No. That's well written. And welcome back. <laughs> Why did you move back? As I said in the letter, a salmon swims north to its point of spawning <laughs> and a duck flies back to its nest. <laughs> Why did you move home? Uh, it's the benefits of COVID and work from home. I don't. Uh, I don't
don't have to go into an office anymore. I'm still employed full time. I'm semi old time, but I work 40, 50 hours a week, desk in my living room. Perfect. And um, I have always maintained ownership of my home here. It's 115 years old, one of the oldest houses in town. Probably the best looking house in this business. And uh, just thought I could come here and eliminate a lot of other expenses, finish off my years working here. There's no hindrance with technology because we have full technology, fiber optic, mobile phone company hotspots. I work for an extremely well known company. I do everything via technology from Black Duck, Minnesota. So you can do it here, you can do it anywhere. Awesome. Great. So, without any further ado, uh, Resolution 202214 20, to approve Ronald Fredrickson to serve on the term of a big adult member. Eight through so it'd be through December. December 31st. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or after the November elections are finalized. Yes. Yeah. I have a motion to approve resolution 2022-14. We have a second. We have a second. Thank you. All those in favor. Aye. Opposed? Welcome aboard, Ron. Thank you. Ron, if you want to join me up front here, I'll get you sworn in. You can see me. Ron, raise your right hand. Please repeat after me. I, Ronald Frederick Fredrickson. I, Ronald Fredrickson. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To support the Constitution of the United States. To support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Minnesota. Constitution of the state of Minnesota. And I will faithfully discharge. I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the office of counselor. The duties of the office of counselor. Of the city of Black Duck, Minnesota. Of the city of Black Duck, Minnesota. To the best of my judgment and ability. The best of my judgment and ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. And have a seat next to your mayor. Uh, next item on the agenda is our consent agenda. And all items on the consent agenda will be passed with one motion, unless there is something someone would like to remove from the consent agenda for further discussion. I would like to remove IOSC. I O S and C. That's the Gulf Board meeting minutes. Um, okay. E, I'm sorry. E. Okay, so the Planning Commission meeting minutes. That's the that's the uh, call for consideration of the library board. Are we still on the consent agenda, John? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. Okay. What There's, I okay, so that's down in the report. Oh, under my report. Yeah. So is yeah. there anything under the consent agenda you want to? Yeah, I O S. I O N S. So the May water income statement, correct? The um the deed letter of approval for the one time exception and the um new rehired and resigned employees list. Okay, yes. So S is off the table. Yeah, well, before when I did this, oh he didn't he didn't uh, I I see. He so, didn't have a I and O. So are we down to I and O? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay, it's getting easier. I mean, sure you go back on the post. I will make a motion to uh, pass the consent agenda minus the items I and O. Correct. Right. Okay, I make that motion. Okay, okay, so Max is making that motion. Second answer. Second answer. John is going to second it. John will second it. Okay. 
Corey has a question? No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, passes. Uh, Don, item I to you, sir. You have the floor. It was L. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, this is medical. Okay. Medical. Sorry. Okay. So there's nothing, Max, that okay, he has no, a question on I. About O. So I just have a question about this letter. Okay. Um, from the Employment Economic Development. Yes. What this was about. So in the previous meeting, um, the City Council approved the uh, one-time exception of taking the restricted revolving loan fund and paying back the state 20%, which provides the city the remaining 80% of that fund, which in our accounting systems is fund 207. It's on your month and you report. And taking that 80% and then being able to transfer it into our new unrestricted revolving loan fund, which is 250. So everything still remains in the reserve accounts done. It's just what we're doing is we're drawing down that restricted revolving loan fund so there's less ties to it. The money just moved from one fund into another fund and we paid the state back their 20%. Kind of like a little bit like black people. <laughs> well, it's you give us 20%, you can keep the rest, and we promise never to look at that fund again, basically, well, is what they're saying. What they're doing. Yeah, it, it kind of this letter just kind of caught my eye on this. Mm -hmm. Like, what are we going to use the $74,000 for? Yeah. I mean, so, so now it'll go into the 250 revolving loan fund account. But what that also provides the city is less state and federal restrictions that that 207 fund when it was originated, a lot of it came from like small cities money. Um, it had made this beacon restrictions on some of it. Um, it also came from the state's small cities account and it had much more restrictions on it had to pay for industrial commercial development. And what the state is doing is they understand that um, over the course of the early 90s until now, a lot of municipalities took that fund and they kind of put a big pot money together, if you will, of their funding. And there wasn't complete um, segregation of the federal MIF funds and the state MIF funds. So in order to make the federal whole, the state is allowing all the municipalities that couldn't track it back any further, as far as they could from when the funds were given to the city, to have a little less restriction on it because they can't hold these municipalities accountable for something that happened 30 years ago when there wasn't enough restrictions and accountability on those funds back in the 90s. So, <clears throat> How did this money come from the employment and economic development? 
I mean, isn't that like unemployment? No, no, deed deed works deed. in many different fashions. That's what I. Yep, yeah, it's not so. just no. Yeah, okay. it's not just employment. It's it's economic. Okay, all too. right. That's why deed is is has all of those resources involved. So deed also is um, a resource for the Main Street Development Grant loan combination yep. that we received for downtown. Um, they have many facets to the department. All right. That's good. Does that help you understand yeah, it does. that a little more? It does, okay. This letter just didn't make any sense. And I read it. I'm like, and it's 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 kind of a long story, but basically those funds from when they were given to municipalities long, long, long ago, they didn't tell them, okay, you need to report to us every year. They only started that in the last decade. And uh, as the administrator of the city, twice a year, I need to report how much that fund has left in it, how many outstanding loans make up um, that balance or the balance that's coming in. So we still have one outstanding loan from NODAC, which is the real estate developer that um, supports um, choice therapy for their development when they bought the old telephone building over there. And that loan will continue to report on. We don't have much in the balance left. It's less than $25,000. And my guess is, is based on the experience, because this is technically, even though it says one time, this is the third time the state has provided municipalities to do this. Um, my guess is they'll continue to do it as long as there are balances that are fairly hefty in those, in those funds for all the local cities. Um, and it, it helps the city in the long run too, because even though we consider it a revolving loan fund, the food fund where this money is going, it has a lot less restrictions as to how the city can use that money. Prior to, it could only be given to commercial development or um, residential rehab with serious restrictions. Now it provides us the ability to use it for internal improvements as well. And that's just one facet of it. It looks like it's a lot. I mean, I, I mean, there's a lot to this. There is a lot to it. So. And you can you can kind of understand uh, with just what I told you how a larger municipality, like let's just say Bemidji, they have an RLF fund too, how much more that's going to provide to a city of that size to utilize those funding too. They have a lot more loans out for commercial property and um, businesses. But you know, their balances are much larger too. So this is kind of like the loan that the city will give out to. Yes. Okay. Well, all right. Yep. That's, that's one facet of it. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. So, so that's good. I, I'm okay. Good that. Perfect. Okay. I do the plain that. Okay. Okay. Great. Over to you. Um. Then I would make a motion to approve items I and O on the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve my Thank you. I'll second that motion. Thank you, sir. Any further discussion on those two? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None passes. The consent agenda is passed, Christina. Is there anyone here for the Black Death Forum? No one will move on. <clears throat> I don't see Mike here right now, so we will go right to the liquor store. Okay. <laughs> um, don't really have a whole lot to report. We had Memorial Day weekend. We did very well. Um, we're obviously with I showed sent around a piece of paper for you guys to take a look at. That's kind of where. Our standing is right now on the bar since January. That's our kind of a breakdown of where we are. Um, obviously, the pull tabs are doing really well. We've got that all finally figured out. The store is doing good. We're getting, uh, still getting a lot of compliments on the liquor store in the kitchen. So we're just trying to improve uh, little bits here and there as we go along.
this one. <laughs> We're still doing the sign for uh, community yet. Yes, in fact, Melanie still... dropped off some stuff for us to put on the sign. I just haven't had a chance to take a look at it. It's been kind of a busy weekend, so okay. I have left a note, and Shonda and I will be in communication about putting stuff on the screen. We we did have um, we did run into a problem with our new door with Beer Cave. But that is due to some of the power outages that we've been having. Kind of has messed up one of the sensors. So I'm not sure if there's something. I'm going to try to get to a little more communication with Zach Lundin. He's our, the guy that installed the door. There are go to people for mechanical works on the door. What company is that? Northern Door. Okay. And they are actually out of the Duluth area, I believe. So I had him come up on Friday to adjust the door and take a look at that sensor. So, so it's like the, it's the sudden power out because the, the on, the off, and then on again. Yes. Quick glitches. You're right. And it's it's a very technical door. So it's called kind of basically a self-learning door. So after a while, it'll just readjust itself. But that sensor is, he fixed it. We were up and running, things are good. But the continued power outages, it might not do so well for the door. So I don't know, if find a way to put it on a battery backup, which doesn't last very long, or we, look into putting in some form of a generator. Yes. So then you have to manually turn it off and manually open it. So it's not, it's not the end of the world. But. It is not the end of the world, no. It is functioning like it's supposed to right now, but and it only just started when we started having power ins and out. Okay, so just something for us to be Aware of, yes. At this time. At this time, yes. That the door has been fixed. It's up and going good, but there could be potential going forward. You can't find some way of maintaining power to it for longer than you know, the 10, 15 minutes if it goes without power, it'll reteach itself, but then if it comes back on, goes back out. I don't know if there's anything you can really do about that. The short bursts like that. You know, because even if you have a generator, usually the power's got to be out for a certain amount of time before it even kicks in. So well, the only other nice thing with the generator would be is when we do lose power, we're not dead in the water. Once you lose power, then nothing works. Computer shut off. Phone lines go dead. I mean, we lose everything. We can't make any sales. We can't do anything. You may not necessarily get your internet back up even if you did have power though. No, and that would be fine, but I mean, you have no computers. Yep. So, <laughs> no point of sale. well, you have no point of sale. So, when you lose power, you can't sell anything. Okay. <laughs> so, just, uh, just something to kind of maybe keep in mind. I mean, it's not, we've been doing it for this long and forever anyway, but. Uh, I realize I'm just making notes for the future. So, other than that, things are going pretty good. We got a few things that we still need to go over with Krauss Anderson. So we're kind of making our finalized list with that to touch base before we sign off any more on that. Anybody else have anything to on? No. Thank you very much. You're um, since Mike was late, I think he should be next. Punished. <laughs> <laughs> should, should we make him go last, or is it? Uh,
I think it will eat. No, that's fine. Go ahead, Mike. What do you got for us? Nothing. Oh, nothing. Nope. I've been too busy to have anything for you, unfortunately. We're running all over the place, so nothing to report. Well, the cemetery looked nice. Memorial Day. Good. We're oh, trying. Gosh. We're busy. Real busy. The roads. Suck. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> yep. Yep. Doing what I can with, you know, spots. There's, believe it or not, still some, some frost coming out in places. So. Yep. I I've seen it especially by your place. Yep. 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 So we're, we're putting along with that, trying to do what we can where we can. You know, obviously, you guys know the buildings coming up over there. Touch on. Nope. Nope. Okay. We're not there yet. Okay. I don't know where that's at. I haven't had time to look at an agenda even. So is that under me, Christina, or, or down the road somewhere? No, it should be in me. The building itself? The, the, the administrator report. The need for change now. Yeah, it's down in the administrator. Okay, then I won't touch on it yet then. Okay. All right. Do you guys have anything for me? Greater? It's working. It's working. Okay. okay. It's working. We got into the uh, the valve bank and rebuild some stuff in there and it's holding for now. It's very possible that tomorrow it could go out, but we yeah. at least kind of know that what it is and what we can do now. So All right. we'll keep putting it together as long as we can. We're on the road. Good. Does anybody have anything for Mike? No. Okay. Misty. Um, as late as Mike. Yeah, we were together. We're both working on the same problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, it's fine ish. I think all your staff is at that point. We're all just fine. Okay. Um, an update um, the category two food license was approved for cooking pizzas a lot of pizzas. I was going to have like this really nice report tonight and that did not happen. Um, so that's a plus. Um, members, I think, are up. That's a plus. Um, I think golfing in general is up. Lots of good comments, lots of positive things on that side. Um, parts are all working pretty good. Uh, there's no hiccups anymore with some of those. Um, we sprayed all the dandelions and they're finally croaking. Gonna spray again so that no more complaints about deadlines. Um, in depth, you want me to go the irrigation system? They came up, MTI came up on Friday and tested it and it operated, and then today it decided not to. So that's where he and I were. I've been out there since three o'clock, and we had a, one that was plugged. Da, 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 da. So we fixed, we fixed that, and hopefully tomorrow the irrigation system will be working. Excellent. And is it my job to say that apparently? There's a resignation. I put it in the agenda, a consent agenda. It was accepted. It was and the increase. That was the easy part. You guys are like, yeah, we approved it. Now I just get to start paddling. Yeah, yeah the and the request for an increase for one of the employees. Okay, included in there Okay, well. perfect. That's what I wanted. Yeah. So the other two are picking up, and I'm obviously picking up. So yes. my little one, pick it up. Paddling like a Smooth on the top. Well, <laughs> only see the top. Don't yeah. see the bottom. Nope. Nope. As you can see, we don't we don't talk about the bottom. Yeah. So otherwise, I mean, yeah, I mean it's it's been bumpy, but it's smooth on the surface. Our sales place. seem to be good. Say that again. Your sales are seem to be yeah, good. Yeah, I think that it has to increase because I mean we're putting so much money into making it better. So, so absolutely. I think we're on the right track. I think we're on the right track. Mm -hmm. Anything for me? Any questions that I didn't? I talked to you earlier, so. Um, we should probably send out like some type of formal thank you or something. Doing good. Mm -hmm. so you can do pizzas. Anything else? Or... Um, no. 
I can do any types of food that I want, like that's concession stand as long as it's NSF, like the commercial stuff. So I did snoop around a little bit for hot dog rollers and that stuff, but part of the problem is, is I'm outside in the mud and I'm having trouble with other things and all those are all coming at once. So my plan is to start adding some of that stuff, but it's really not a huge need to add some of that until I like it gets to um, like a, a tournament and things like that where I know where I'm gonna have a fleet of people just to have hot dogs on a random Tuesday is probably not going to really be a huge hit. Well, I was told, however, how wonderful it was to be able to call from the eighth pole, order a pizza, pick it up, and still go play another round. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's been, people have really been really liking that. Like I said, my I, my first order, they're coming back tomorrow. I'm going through them pretty quick. And my tables are all done. They're all up. Oh, no. So, yeah. Okay. Little baby steps. What kind of pizza do you do it? Giovanni's. Oh. Yep. Oh, nice. Yeah. Boy. It didn't work out. I just said nice. I like it. Thank Thanks you for that donation. Yes, thank you, Misty. Uh, oh, it was in there? Okay. Because they were down there, they wanted to meet with me, but I couldn't find I can show you details. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have been really kicking in. I can't. I mean, I feel kind of guilty at how much help I've been getting from some of the members and stuff. You know. Oh, and that's another thing. I ordered a new door for the basement, which was seven hundred ninety dollars. That's how expensive they are. And currently, our upstairs door on the north side will not lock. So nothing else I can do. So it's just relying on the security system. But we should order a whole another door, or we should, I don't, I don't know. Has anybody looked at it? Who, who would look at it? You tell me a person who would look at it. We've looked at it and looked at it, and then every time we look at it, it works. And then I had parties there this weekend, and then Pam went up, and Pam is like the door expert because she's been there so long. She said it will not lock. So. Misty needs to order two more doors. She Misty's doesn't have it in the budget, but she needs two more doors. It's plain and simple. That's what needs to have. Misty's being a baby about spending the money on it. Well, you're not being a baby. You just don't have it in the budget. Somehow well, we, need, we need to make it happen because the and doors I, just, I thought if I could limp by and just do the one door, because there's $790 a piece, I think that's like twice the price. I wanted to see if I could limp through this year and see if the prices were going to drop at all next year. Because then, I mean, my I have two members that are going to help me install the doors because I got a quote to install the door and that was three hundred and fifty dollars. I need three, so seven hundred ninety dollars per door and three hundred fifty dollars to install it. I mean, so then there's a little part of me that I'm like, okay, do we have to use both doors to go in and out just for the deck, and it's only for when we really entertain. So I don't know. Is that a fire code thing? Yeah, I was just going to ask that. Is there some the kind of fire code that we have to be in? There's, there's currently three doors upstairs, three exit doors upstairs, and there's two downstairs. One right now. One currently working. The other one is permanently closed. That's the only way we can get it set up. Oh, okay. Yep. The other door that's downstairs, so she's got one on order. That's the door on the east side of the basement. The other door downstairs is in need of replacement as well. This door upstairs, I mean, okay, yeah, technically I could go over there and I could screw it shut for a safety thing because right now it's not locking and you would still have two doors, but I mean, that's not what we want to do. If we're going to do anything, we need to replace it. And I would think that now would be the time, even though they are expensive, order it so that you have matching doors in there. It's not a hodgepodge of different doors. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I, I think if you're gonna get doors, ordered one, you should get three doors, but we gotta figure out how to pay. So- And stop. I think we could probably get some help with that. So where and how? Yeah. I mean, I, I asked my, the my department is maxed out right now. I'm out there helping Misty as much as I can. I'm losing a guy shortly. 
I mean, I can't have everybody offering my department for everything all the time. I'm sorry if I'm brash, but I'm behind with everything as it is. I, I don't know that I have time. So if, if she's got to find someone, then that's just the way it's going to have to be. Okay, so we need us to have some. $790 per door and $350 put it in. That's your estimate. I already did that. And I was like, nope. Is that from the door company? Northwoods Lumber. Northwoods oh, Lumber oh. is $790 per door. And then I had Northwoods Lumber find me a, a person in Stone to come out and just give me a quote on what it would cost to install it. And that's why I went out and asked two members how handy they were. And they said that they would try to put in one door. I didn't ask them to put in all three. I think that's asking too. The one door would be one thing for them to help me do, but to turn around and be like, you're going to spend a whole day here. And I don't, I, it'd be nice to see how they do on one door. If it was simple and they do well and they're like, hey, that wasn't so bad, then and maybe then I would ask them to do another one, but I, I don't want to put my hand out and say, we're going to do stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, And it's a matter of like, I mean, I know that that sounds like a priority, but I don't feel like having both doors upstairs to expose to that little deck area is priority. If we could just have one that was working, it could be just one that's fine. But we need to get the other one downstairs fixed because so downstairs you need at least one and a backup on each floor, I think. What are you gonna do with the other door upstairs? I, I just lock it and leave it out of service. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's 3500 bucks for three doors. Because the alarm system will, like you said, you can screw it shut and we can make it unusable. And then we, we have the two doors and we have backup for a fire. We're good because one of those doors on the deck, if there was an emergency, those folks still need to be able to get off the deck. And the only way to do that is on the staircase on the northwest corner of the building. I don't know. I mean, I can call Adam and own the doors and we can wing it too. I mean, I don't know. It just seems like a lot of money and I don't know. I don't know. I don't too much. Try to get water to run. I can't, I can't have people come and go. There's no, they don't want to be on my greens. So that's kind of the least of my worries right now is the door to get to the deck to have soda. And the building is not that big. Your square footage upstairs is not that big where it can be two doors. I mean, it, I would Great. like to have everything actually working. It would be really cool if that was all working, but I just don't, I haven't had a chance to sit down and really assess and decide. I just found out the door wasn't working today as I found out that my irrigation system wasn't working. Do you want to put it on the back burner? Yeah. I mean, I don't think I need a council's approval to buy a door, right? We're going to need to get it regardless. We need to secure the building. So. I, I would expect the council to approve that. Mm -hmm. The building's got to get fixed. That's a, that's a big one. I mean, that's where I'm saying if you're buying, if you're, you're, you're going to do one, two now. You're going to do one yeah. or two, then we might as well do yeah. three. Exactly. I don't want to hear any smack when my numbers are all in the red. And smack. 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 Holy. Well, it's easy to make decisions for somebody else and then turn around and question me why my numbers are, you know what no. I mean? I'm just defending myself here too. But I'm glad that you talked hey. about that tonight because otherwise we wouldn't say, well, I'm not ready for you. Mm -hmm. So we now we know. No, we didn't know that your door didn't work. I didn't either until well, four they, hours we ago. didn't know you ordered the new door for now. Oh, care. yeah. I'm, well, so if it's Judy. Want to make a motion tonight? And truly, I mean, you're probably right because the downstairs door broke because what, what's happening is it's got the up and bottom. Like people are wrenching on that lock so much underneath that they're they're stripping it. And that's what happened to the basement door. Well, now it's starting to happen to the upstairs north door. People are wrenching on that so much that they're stripping that out. And then I can't just replace the handle. I have to replace the whole door. So, I mean, Mike's probably right. I probably should just order all three new doors and just like pull it. But I just wasn't. The mind frame to take that on it, you know. Do we need a council approval for that? We need a carpenter on this 
on this council. Well, yes now. and yes. I have a card. Yes. And we somebody want to make a I motion to approve this? I would approve it because it's not inside of Misty's budget and she has not. And it's going to go outside of it. Yes. And to clarify, this is having it installed by a professional installer, not a member. Well, the three hundred and fifty dollars is from a carpenter. Okay. I don't know if he's approved or anything, but he's a local handyman. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I'm going to pull the trigger on him because that was the only quote that I got was three hundred fifty dollars from this guy. I probably would go ask. Um, I have a couple other numbers in my head of people that I could call and ask. Also, and just get a second opinion. Get the doors on order. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And maybe the members, the ones that I have doing it that are handy, if they're if they do the first one and it goes really well, if they want to help. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you guys tell me. I think we should order them and then we will work on that. Okay. I'll make a motion. Order order three doors or order two more doors. Okay. And we'll wait on the installation fee until we figure something out. Okay, I'll shop around a little bit. Yeah, we can. I got the numbers for you. Okay. If you want. Um, if not, I have a motion. Do I have a second? You have oh, a second. second. <laughs> we have two seconds. Oh, cool. <laughs> we see you. Uh, okay, is there any further discussion on this? Uh, so all, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Youth golf starts Wednesday. Um, that camp is running for the full month. Mm -hmm. That the youth clubs, some of them, I got five of them. They didn't get all of them yet because they ran all at um, sports. Oh, yes, plus the new benches were stained. The old benches were refurbished and put back out. We were in need of benches and we just restored them. So, I mean, there's lots of, lots of things going on. And good. When does the uh, kick it, kick golf thing? Is that? That is not a thing right now. Yeah, that's not. That is not actually like up in, even okay. in my vehicles. No, not right now. Community Ed is doing this youth. Thing where they have instructors coming down through community ed and they're going to run that for the whole month of June. Okay. I think there's 15 kids signed up. Yep. Okay. Um, well, let's see. I don't have anything else for you, Miss. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Moving on. Thank you, Missy. Um, so, uh, as it pertains to the library, uh, Miriam and I met last Friday, and we have um, drafted a letter to the KRLS board, and I've included it in the packet for council consideration. If you are happy with the wording, um, Miriam and I are both in the mindset where we need to introduce this idea for this project before we bombard the board with details. So we didn't want this letter to be super detailed because we're not at that part, um, but we are both um, prepared to do a presentation to the board when um, they want that information. To KRLS. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. So that way we can go into more details of, you know, this is how much square footage we have now. This is what the new facility will give us. And everything that Miriam presented to you guys at the work session could be then presented at that time. And I think that that would be an easier way to transition into this because obviously, Lori, correct me if I'm wrong, the board doesn't meet until July anyway. This is correct. So, you know, that gives Miriam and I time to put together a better presentation. And if in the meantime, if, um, Melissa sees this and says, yeah, they're probably going to want to, you know, meet with us. Then Miriam and I have more than a week and a half to put together some type of document for them. So I think this will at least get the board um, in the idea that the city has got um, a 
a cohesive understanding of what we'd like to do if we have an open meeting. So what Miriam and I would like is just a motion to approve the letter that's been drafted and um, approve sending it off to KRLMs. But is this to buy that building to get that money? Correct. Correct. We, we agreed that the best way for us to start this process is to get CARELESS on board with the concept of being able to move into a new facility and for them to you know, um, in, be in support of releasing the funds for this project, knowing that it would, the purchase of the new facility would be, you know, pending the sale of the existing one as well. I don't see nothing wrong with the letter. I think that's a great letter. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not gonna buy it. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Um so <laughs> that building across the street, how much money is the city gonna have to put into it to make it into a library? Oh yeah. Well. That should be in consideration before we go hog wild to try to get the money for the library. Well, the, I agree, but the KRLS board doesn't even meet until third week in July. So we need to know, we need to get into those details. Mike has had no time for the stuff that we've asked at the work session. It's only been 10 days since the work session since Miriam made this presentation. And there was a holiday in that mix. So there's been no time to put a grandiose presentation together to say, this is how much it's gonna cost, this is how much we're gonna save, this is how much we could make by having a place that we could rent out space, just like Marion presented to the guys. I think the, the initial, you know, when we met that night at the library over there and had the conversations and everything, it was basically said that if that teller station that's there currently was taken out, that's about the only thing that really needed to be done right away. And they could set up and start functioning as a library. So. I know you have concerns about the HVAC system. That was one of your questions at the work session. But again, right. that's going to be something but I, I think you, to You're on. asking about renovations and what needs to happen to make it a library. And in, in their eyes, not very much. <laughs> I understand that. It, it's just we're gonna, you're going to go make this big leap. I mean, a, actually, after you get this money and put it towards the building, I mean, if we end up, what is the city going to end up being put like 10,000, 20,000, 50,000? I mean, it, can, uh, if, is, there, is there anything to budget for this? No. I mean, I, 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 I guess I'm curious what exactly your question is because the heat works over there, right? And it's obviously functioning. I mean, they heated it all through the winter for the last how many years? You know, the system works. I, I, short of overhauling it, a complete overhaul, but why would you be doing that? That's not what I'm asking. I, what I'm saying, what, what, what I'm trying to get at is if, if we buy, if, if the city goes and buys this building and they, they, you say, take out the tower station and they can operate in there, and then we have nobody look at any of them. The mechanical sure. there. Now, all of a sudden, we run into this big problem, kind of like what's going on over there. Um, I, I then we have this big expense without having anybody look at it. I don't think anybody's trying to do it without looking at it. I yeah. think what she's trying to do is it's to see if it's even going to be possible before we pay somebody to go and well, do any sort of inspection. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because KRLS has to approve this. As a qualified um, account of being able to spend this money, Don, the KRLS board has to approve first. So if they, if we did all that stuff prior to this letter, we would be wasting our money if they said no. So this is a, this is a pre-letter to see if they're even going to say yes. Does that make sense? Yes, that, 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 that makes a lot of sense. Okay. I didn't have, I didn't have these concerns about it. I understand. I brought them up. I, I believe that was the general consensus of the work session, Don. <laughs> but there was also a general consensus that this would be a good move. Otherwise, 
the council wouldn't have asked Mary and I to draft a letter. Right. So and does would, the council uh, want this letter sent? I will make a motion to uh, send this letter to the KRLS board. And I'll second that motion. Thank you. Is there any discussion on the letter? On my motion. Excuse me. Uh, Thank you for opposed. writing. <laughs> You're welcome. I, 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 opposed? I, None. Motion passes. On to item seven. Okay. Um, um, so the first item I have for council to move on Max is um, a revision of resolution 2211. Okay. Um, since the May council meeting, um, when the board approved the purchase of the John Deere 1600 from Parker Garage and agreed to the resolution with the terms that were presented, it was under the understanding that the 2009 for 19,000 was going to be the choice that uh, golf board or building thought was going to be the best for the golf course. And after that date, he went, he had an opportunity to go through both of them and he was at better, was it 09? I'm sorry, the years next time. I think it's a 2002, was the lesser of the, the less expensive of the two. So what I provided for the council is um, a new revised resolution with correct language for the internal loan um, terms, because also on the first resolution, it stated it was a term of 10 years, but I provided a five-year term schedule. So that was on me. Gave you the wrong language with the correct schedule. <laughs> so now what I've done is I've revived the resolution with the correct terms for the correct number of years in the resolution and updated the schedule with the lower cost of the unit that was delivered. So the council's already approved the purchase of, but- You just need the right language inside it. You just need the right language. Okay. So I'm looking for a resolution to approve the revision of 2211, please. Right. I can make a resolution to approve uh, 2211, approving the repayment of the revolving loan fund. Hey, we have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Is there any discussion on this? Any questions? Clear? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Um, item B, I'm going to segue to Todd Higgin. He is here from Ellers to discuss the interim financing for the um, uh, public works, public safety building. Are you there, Todd? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Great. Yep. So thank you, Christina. Um, Mayor, Council Members, uh, Todd Hagen from Ellers and Associates, um, here to present the uh, the bids for fi temporarily financing your new public works and public safety building. Uh, thanks again for having me remote. I've got a meeting in Long Prairie here coming up. So um, thanks so much for doing this again. I, I, I did intend to come see you guys in person at some time. So um, Maybe, really maybe nice next time, huh? So the weather's <laughs> getting really nice up there now. It is, and I like to hear all about that golfing stuff. So, uh, you know, <laughs> let me let me know when the invite comes. That make a special trip up there. There you go. So, so yeah, no, we had. Uh, so we take this bond out for bids. Uh, went out into the market. Um, you know, opened it up to anybody that wanted to uh, throw out a bid to us up until. Um, it was 9.30 this morning. Yeah, you guys were in front of Long Prairie. And uh, and so we received three bids uh, this morning. 
Uh, but before I get into that, I, I do want to let you know that, you know, we did go in for a credit rating again for you. Um, we did a short term credit rating. This bond's like out a year is all, you know, it's going to be before the USDA takeout of the long term bond. So, um, so we did, you know, go through the the whole thing with Standard & Poor's. Uh, Christina did a nice job of answering all their questions a week or so ago and uh, gave uh, the analysts uh, out of Chicago as much information as we could. And, and we got an SP1, um, but they also affirmed your A um, rating on all your outstanding general obligation bonds and you have a stable outlook. So uh, the SP1 is a less expensive rating short term. Um, and, uh, and that's why we went that, uh, that route for this bond issue. Um, you know, your USDA bond will not be rated. That's just going to be all locked in at a subsidized rate um, next year when we lock in on, on that one. So um, we, did, uh, we did update uh, I mean, so everything looked real status quo because, you know, we did this last year, right, uh, with the liquor store. So we really did just update uh, those folks with um, your 21 audit and budget for 22 and your economic outlook and all that good stuff. So it was a pretty, uh, pretty nice call. But one one sort of highlight that I I pick up when I look at the rating report, and of course, it's attached to my sale day report if you folks got a, a copy of that we won't go through that but um sort of one thing that i think would um you know could help you if you ever wanted to work towards um just looking a little bit better uh, as far as in the eyes of a rating agency you know there's not a whole lot you can do about the things you need to do and the size of black duck right and and all that so the a category is you know perfect for you that i wouldn't expect any less or any more um, unless something wonderful, you know, comes into town. But um, but the uh, when you look at the uh, unassigned balance in the general fund, and they also take into account, you know, the liquor store balance and things like that, you've got a very strong 49% um, op operating expenditure uh, balance, you know, which is around a little over 400,000. Um, for a city of your size, uh, breaking the threshold of $500,000 of fund balance, including your liquor store fund, would be something you could work towards. Kind of a third party sort of reason for, for doing that is that you would score more kind of methodology points with, with these folks. So in a smaller city like Black Duck, um, it's more of that dollar figure of $500,000. So like in a city of like Bemidji, would be more of like 72 to 75 percent of expenditures is what would give them a little kick uh, up a little bit too. So that kind of depends the size of your city, and that was my my takeaway as far as um, you know what if you ever wanted to work towards something that you could consider that you know at some point you don't have to, but you got a pretty strong fund balance the way it is. So kind of getting back to um, the bond issue. So again, three bids. Um, the best bid, you know, is attached to my report, you know, came from um, Northland Securities out of Minneapolis. And, uh, and United Bankers Bank went in with them and DA Davidson. DA Davidson is over in Des Moines, do a lot of work with those guys separately as well. And United Bankers Bank is a bank for banks on, I think on the corner of uh, 35, W and uh, 494 down there in kind of Bloomington area. So so one bid from those guys, the best bid, but two others went in uh, with them at 2.187%. Uh, and then Piper Sandler, you know, used to be Piper Jaffray, I think maybe recognize that name. They were at 2.192 and Oppenheimer out of Philadelphia, 2.49%. Uh, so um, so that's a really good, um, I think, respected um, uh, representation of three good bids. You know, the difference among the three is $6,400. It's a short-term bond, so not a lot, but, um, you know, it's, it's well worth going out to the market to, to see what we get competitively is how we, how we uh, did this bond. It's a pretty large bond issue. So, um, so that worked out pretty well. I think um, that was... If I remember correctly, 
uh, under what our pre-sale report was by, I think, over one and a half percent or so, sort of what we were predicting, you know, um, rates have gone up, right? We all know that. And uh, bond rates are no exception. So uh, they're ticking up uh, every week as, as we move forward. You know, if you look at the graph I've got, you know, also in my report, looks like, you know, rates have sort of gone down and stabilized a little bit. There's a kind of a large 30-year graph of the trend, basically. So, um, you know, we're all hoping that things kind of settle down a little bit. Um, but um, everybody, you know, a lot of municipalities are are still moving forward with their projects and, uh, and you're no exception. So uh, appreciate the movement towards, uh, towards the end here, right? Um, so we did get a little bit of a, a premium bid on this. Um, if you look at the bid tabulation, there's kind of a difference between the interest rate of 2% and the reoffering yield of 1.65%. Um, so the difference there is a little bit of a premium that the uh, customers of Northland Securities uh, would give you folks. So you could either lower the bond issue down a little bit or keep that money. Um, Christine and I kind of talked about it this morning, uh, decided to keep the $8,400 and some change um, and just, uh, you know, it doesn't increase the par amount of the bonds. Remember, we're kind of tied to that $1,965,000. That's that was has been budgeted for. That's what the the loan from the USDA is going to be. You know, it's going to be two, but they're going to add up to that. So we're we're really tied to that uh, par amount of the bond issue. So we got a little bit of like production basically in the bid here, and I think that comes in handy with uh, some change orders that you might be looking at right now. So um, I think that worked out well for you as well. So you got a little bit eighty four hundred dollars to the plus in the project fund for the the bond issue as well. So um, the bond will close on June 23rd. You know, everything gets uh, sent to you guys um, to invest it, you know, while you invest it and then draw on it as the construction uh, moves forward on that. Um, uh, other than that, I think, uh, you know, the pre-sale or the sale day reports got, you know, the attachments here that are, are final, you know, the bid tabulation, the the bond run that's back there is is all final. Um, rating report, a good read. You guys want to just take a look at that. It uh, gives you an idea kind of what I was just uh, uh, talking about as far as fund balances. But, you know, you look real status quo there. And uh, they, they knew this bond was coming from 2021. We talked to them, so it wasn't a surprise either. And then you do have a, a bond resolution in front of you. Um, that will get finalized or has been finalized uh, through just uh, my discussion here with you folks. And, uh, and, and so that's what you would consider tonight is adopting that, that bond resolution if, you, uh, if you're okay with what you see here tonight. So I yield to the council for any questions or comments you guys might have. Uh, no, Don, I don't have any questions for you. This was been through it. <laughs> yep, pretty expected. I mean, it came down to rates popped up on us a little bit and they came back down. So it was, uh, I think it's landing right, right, pretty much close to where we budgeted. So uh, it's good to kind of have somewhat of a non event as well. If, so. if I may interject, I know Todd mentioned the change order and that yep. money. And Todd, you speak up if I'm saying this wrong and to try to do it, you know, in my language. Sure. But when you have a bond of this size, you have, um, you have issuance costs. And when the rating is lower, that issuance cost is, is lower as well. And when we went out, we anticipated a specific percentage, like Todd had said, and estimated what those issuance costs were going to be. Because that percentage is lower, that provides more of the funding construction and we originally anticipated that was going to be our issuance costs. So as we move forward into the agenda for consideration, that funding that we, I'm talking about is something that would be not an additional cost, if I may. Am I saying that right? Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I hope yep. you heard me. <laughs> yep, sounds good. Yep, sounds good. <laughs> okay. Basically, 
you've got one thing lowering that is not a city contribution, which right. puts more money in the in the in the bucket to use for the construction. Yeah, yeah, less less cash, right? More, a little bit more bond funds. Yep, right. yep. Yep. So with that. So what we need from the council today is the approval of that resolution. And I drafted it as uh, I gave it a number, Todd. I gave it 2215. <coughs> um, okay. It's the resolution providing the issuance of the sale of the bond at the temporary bond and the series. Okay. Uh, does anyone do you need a motion uh, for resolution 2022-15 resolution providing the ensuance and sale of the $1,965,000 general obligations temporary bond series 2022-A? Correct. Yep. I have a motion. Do That's I have a motion. second? Thank you. Is there any discussion on this? No. Any questions? No. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Once are passed. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks again for the business. I appreciate it. Thanks, Todd. Thank you. See you guys. Have a good summer. Thanks, Todd. I'll talk to you in the morning. Will do. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye. So you have uh, the sheet for there also, Christina, the voting sheet? Yeah, I'll, okay. I've got that noted. There will be some final paperwork on that. Thank you. The stop in and sign tomorrow that has to go to the to Ellers besides the resolution. Correct. Yeah, I don't see. Okay, so. Sorry, we had the motion and Dawn seconded it, right? Right. And I'll stick it on my agenda when it comes paperwork for this project. Okay. Okay, see. Right. So good segue. Um like you're gonna have to help. <laughs> So there's a change order already on the project, um, and it was discussed at the con at the construction meeting last Thursday morning. Um, this came up early last week, late the week before, right around the Memorial Weekend. Doesn't really matter. Um, with the with the dirt guys, there's some peat in the area where um, the lift station is going in. There's peat there, and it, there's a very, very small amount right at the southwest corner of the building. Um, I see no need to chase it across that parking area out there. All I see is the need to pull it out of that very corner of the building. You go chasing it, we could chase it all the way into the pump, but there's no reason for that because that corner over there the only thing that's ever going to see is a pickup. There's no heavy equipment on that side of the building. That's not how this building was set up. So if we got to put, you know, a load of gravel in it once in a while or something, so be it then. So this number was off of the recommendation of Widseth that that corner right at the building be excavated and placed with good material. Correct, Christina? Correct. And I was not going to provide a change order without the council for that. Yep, we knew we had a meeting. We wanted to talk to you guys. I mean, it has to be done. <laughs> Plain and simply, it has to be done. But I want you guys to know about it. I want you guys to sign off on it. I said a little bit easier knowing that the bond rating uh, was lower knowing that the majority of the costs of this change order are going to be absorbed by that. Absolutely. So when they, uh, I have a question about this, because when they put the, did the court testing out there, they didn't find any peat in that? So there was nine borings, and this is somewhat in that location. It would have been the 
for the southwest boring? It's when I say that this is in the very southwest corner, I mean it's in the very southwest corner. Yeah, out there. So yeah, you know where it's at then. You can see it. Yeah. Then and those, when it was all borings, open, think, had the boring wasn't right where this is. Well, that's why I was wondering. No. Yeah. No, most most of the entire area that was bored is fine. Yeah. It's clay. It's not all full of peat. It's we're getting over toward the swamp here, yeah. and it's just there's there's when the 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 ditch I call it, you know, the excavation when it was open and exposed, you could see it. I mean, I could stand there and I could look at it and see how it went from you know the good colored clay to kind of the not so good color, and then it faded into peat color right at that. Very far apart. So I mean, in, in all honesty, it, it could be a lot worse. If it were, we would have known that with the soil samples. It's just a little pocket over there. Yeah, just a pocket. I was wondering why all the dirt we hauled in there. I'm going, I what are they doing over there? Well, that's a, that's that's not even this. That hasn't been done yet. What they're doing is all standard subcutting. Oh, yeah, the, they're, they're, that's all standard. That was built right into this whole thing. So, and where the the lift station is ended up being some peat there. When that was out, when they put the lift station in, at that point we put better material back in, and then the line that'll go from the lift station to the shop. That'll also, as long as you're pulling the material out, good material is going back in. Okay. So. So I would like an approval of this of this uh, change order, please. I want to make that motion. <laughs> approve this change order. I'll make a motion to approve the change order. Uh, the change there is not a number on it, Don. It's the supplemental agreement from TNT, and it is agreement number one uh, for an ad of ten thousand eight hundred fifty dollars. I'll make a motion to approve this uh, change order from T and T for ten thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. A motion to have a second. I'll second. Is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Let's get it done. Okay. Um, item number D, um, just trying to keep you guys all in the loop with the Main Street Redevelopment Project. Um, after uh, the construction meeting I had with JD and Dogmeyer excavating um, with the additional um, uh, removal of 32 Main, as you may have remembered, uh, the original quote from Dogmeyer to include 32 Main. So he has updated this quote. Um, this is still within the parameters of the demolition um, eligible budgeted expense from the deed grant loan. Um, and I also encouraged um, Domar to put in um, you know, a prepay, a pre app, if you will, so he doesn't have to float this entire project. So you'll note in this um, proposal, it's got a, a, a down payment end of July and then a final payment. Um, the other thing that I'd like to have the council consider um, when they approve, consider approving this proposal is um, Carl has added in there um, an additional uh, $2,100 to remove the tar and replace with fresh class five granite um, in the area behind Anderson's. That isn't part of this parcel. Is, it, is that our parcels? It is not. But that I have, part of, yeah, but it's it's going to get ripped up in the process of the removal of the buildings, and that's one of Carl's concerns. Um, my hope is that um, the city will be able to enter into an agreement with um, the shade store for a new, uh, to redraw the parcel lines. So that's a, a full 75 by 150 piece of property instead of a food shade. It's a property. All right. It'll make for a better future development. I think it was a complete piece. 
So what I'm asking for is to approve Carl's updated um, bid is um, $40,000 down and to consider the, uh, the additional. Okay. Need a motion on that. I can make a motion to update uh, Bill Meyer's estimation for 2022 after plan reconstruction plan 2020 12126 final 12321. And then the extra of like $2,100. Yes. For the five yards of granite. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a motion to have a second. Second. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on this? Mm -hmm. Will they be starting? Uh, July, correct? Yeah, July 5th is his estimated date. Okay. With the approximate completion date, Carl has of August 1st. Excellent. All right. Yeah. We don't know. It. We don't we're know not, what kind of uh, we're dinosaurs gonna we're going to find down there. I'm going to say <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No motion passes. That pretty much concludes everything except for our calendar here. Yeah. Which fills up quickly. Which fills up quickly. Yeah. There shouldn't. There isn't a whole lot in here that's out of the normal max. Um, I believe I have the next construction meeting for the facility on here, right? They say last Thursday, it's gonna be every other week. That's what I thought. We yeah, so to. the 16th would be the next one here at 1030 again. You know, t and will be here with Seth City. So a, a council members will come in and start. Yep. Perfect. Uh, June 20th, um, an observation of June 18th, um, City Hall will be closed. June 22nd to the 24th is the Minnesota City's annual conference and meet. Um, and Don and myself are both in attendance of that. Uh, that said, the next work session is not going to be until the 27th. So I think it's uh, an extra week. It's just, I can't get it all in. No, it's fine. Okay. I'd rather hear about the conference actually. Yeah, um, July 4th, obviously, is Independence Day, um, and the holiday actually lands on the Monday. So City Hall will be closed that day, um, and then your regular council meeting for July is scheduled for the 11th. Hopefully I didn't get any of those dates. Well, I think we might have someone else. If you're finished, Christina. I'm done. Okay. Yeah. I thought we might we might have someone else with the planning commission. Oh, and we have another. another okay. That'd be awesome. Be awesome. Happens to be a hired engineer. Be awesome. Too. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have somebody that's got background on that stuff. So. Just letting everybody know. Super. Uh, anything else going on? Council, anybody got anything they want to out there? Yeah, I didn't really put a lot of community events on there because I'm sure I'm missing a ton. I got uh, the next, the June grill and chill, and the next chamber meeting on there, but I'm sure there's there's a ton of stuff going on this summer. But community, community at alone, there's lots of stuff going on in town. Pickleball starts in the week. Yeah, I'm sure it's tomorrow. Yeah, so. Town is hopping. I made 10 reservations for Pine Tree Park today. Oh, that's and I stuff. probably missed about three because I've just been, I was so busy today. I couldn't take all my phone calls. I, when I locked up at 4 30, I called four people back. I could actually get on the phone at that point. <laughs> it's busy on the whole RV side on the north in um, this full weekend of July 4th. And our, the pavilion is completed. So as soon as the gate gets open, and we work and on you're some erosion that, issues. Right? Pardon? Do you agree that you're going to rent that, add that as a rental? Yes. 
Can we wait till next year? Each rental. Is it if you are renting out the other two and you have to pay to preserve them or reserve them, and you don't do that to this one, everyone's going to be sitting there. I think we should just talk the same. Mm -hmm. Great, great that road is still closed going out there? Yep. Still cross coming out of it? I'm going out there as soon as we're done with oh. here. I only got so much time in a day. I'll be out there till dark tonight trying to get it open for Wednesday. Well, I thought maybe the golf course maybe. <laughs> yeah, it very well might be. <laughs> <laughs> only so much of us to go around. I know, I know. You guys are doing a good job. And it doesn't go with it. It's not. Well, Wednesday, I know when the, the camp will out there, they're walking down from the camp. I didn't know. So. I hope they're careful with where they park those buses. Uh, it's awfully soft and wet. It's only up to 20 kids. I assume they're taking the bus a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we should probably talk to all of them. I don't know. Nobody's reached out to ask me or talk to me about anything. So I don't know. Are they taking a bus? Well, I, it doesn't say if they're taking a bus, but there is only up to 20 kids who were. Uh, you could have a uh, role. You'll have the gate open by once. It will do. But they were still going to walk down from my from my mm -hmm. When I spoke with um, Melissa Mystic a week ago, I told her I didn't know if we were going to get open this week or not. And I, was, uh, I wasn't trying to sugarcoat anything. I just didn't know. So, I mean, we had just, when was that bad storm? A week ago, Tuesday? So, you know, yeah. we, you know, we were supposed to hold off on repairs until county assessed everything, but this mess get done. But yeah, that FEMA money, that that thing moves forward or not, is should not stop us from doing any of the repairs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because that might take a while before we get it approved, and if we get it approved, when we can see that. That's for the whole time. Oh, remember I said I went to that emergency yep. management meeting. Okay. So I included the erosion of the beach yeah. and a number of other things. All right. Great. Well, if there's nothing else, <coughs> motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. I'll second it. There we go. <laughs> All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Hi, right. Lori. Thanks, Lori, for attending on Zoom. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 I think it's going to be too much. Yeah, it's okay. 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 It's